crowd arrived expecting nothing less than a triumphant start to Italy's World Cup campaign. But they were made to wait 77 minutes for the winning goal against Austria. Donadoni started it. Viali made the crucial run and Schilacci finished it off with a splendid header. Scalacci, the tough little striker from Sicily, was to finish top scorer in the tournament with six goals. This first one arriving only three minutes after he'd come on as a substitute. He hardly looked back. The USA were next to come to Rome with few supporters and even fewer hopes. However, Italy were finding it hard to kill off opponents, even though the solitary goal came early. Just 11 minutes before Giannini tiptoed past defenders to finish off with a match-winning shot. After this, the Italian crowd expected more, but the Americans defended better. However, it meant two wins in two games for Italy. All Italy was talking of Baggio when the match against Czechoslovakia began. It was the Juventus star's first World Cup start. But early on, it was against Schilacci who was causing most problems. And it was he, after nine minutes, who scored it in his opening goal, a header following that corner. But the crowd left the Olympic Stadium that night talking only of one thing. This remarkable goal coming up by Baggio. Just watch how he glides from deep, shimmying past defenders. And the ice-cool finish. To be followed by the inevitable white-hot celebrations. After this, Baggio mania swept Italy as they joyously replayed this goal from all angles. Three qualifying games, three victories as Italy advanced with confidence to the second phase. The flags were out in Florence meanwhile and they turned out to be flags of victory for Czechoslovakia who put five past the United States in their opening match there. The United States however had made good chances early on and it was from deep in their own half that Czechoslovakia fashioned their first goal with a fine flowing move. Skuravu finished it off in style. That was after 25 minutes. 13 minutes later, a penalty gave Czechoslovakia the chance to make it two. At first glance, it may have looked a tough decision. But the slow motion replay more than gave the benefit of the doubt to the Swiss referee. And Bilek scored.
Goal number three was a near post header. The Czechs are renowned for it. The United States showed their naivety. Hasek, the score. A minute later, the United States were down to ten men when Winaldo was sent off, but they then produced one of the World Cup's best individual goals. Caligiuri, the scorer, finishing of the highest order. There were few moments like this for the United States. But soon, normal service was resumed. And another header from a corner, this time Skuravi, his second. The fifth came in the final minute. The United States defence melting once more. Lohofi getting the final touch. 5-1 to Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia against Austria, decided by a penalty after 29 minutes. Pfeffer's back pass was short. Goalkeeper Lindenberger brought down Chovanec. Chovanec went off injured. And Bielek scored from the spot. The Czechs moved into the second phase. Austria, who came as dark horses for a lot of commentators, had a miserable World Cup. An unconvincing victory over the United States was their only result. But in beating the United States, Andreas Ogris at least provided the tournament with another of those Baggio-type individual goals. That, in truth, was the high point of the whole proceedings for Austria. Even though 14 minutes later, they scored again. Penetrating run by Streiter, finished off well by Rodax. Even so, there was a blight on the Austrian performance when, seven minutes from the end, Ramos turned the Austrian defence inside out. And Murray provided the final indignity for goalkeeper Lindenberg. The opening day had style. And with it, there was a surprise. In Milan, there was victory for Cameroon over the defending world champions Argentina. A wonderful climbing header by Oman Villi. Another goalkeeper in trouble, this time Pompido of Argentina. And the world audience rubbed its eyes in disbelief. As Cameroon celebrated. And of course, there was much for Maradona to do, and for Canidia too, if the damage was to be repaired in the later games. Maradona well to the fore against the Soviet Union in Naples. His clear handball, not spotted by the referee, kept out a certain Soviet goal, and Argentina then went ahead with a fine towering header from Troglio. World Cup's most electrifying sight was Kanija in full flight. This run set up a second somewhat untidy goal. The Soviet defence half waiting for the whistle for a free kick here. Not Burachaga though. Argentina victorious, USSR agreed. Argentina were improving, but the Romanians were a match for them. However, Argentina led after 61 minutes with this header by Monzo. Only for Romania to equalise six minutes later. It was inevitable that Haji would have a part in it somewhere. The number 10's back heel, Lakatus down the right. Sabo headed it back for Balint to finish it off. But Argentina qualified for the second phase. Romanian supporters, with their newfound freedom, were in Bari for the match against the USSR. And they were not disappointed when, five minutes before half-time, a piercing run by Lakatus ended with an emphatic opening goal. 